Barrel House Chuck has been playing the blues in Chicago and around the world for nearly 40 years. He's recorded more than a dozen albums and he's in the Chicago Blues Hall of Fame. But Chuck hasn't played much in the last few months, even at home. Cancer has raked him over the coals. Barrel House Chuck, born Charles Gehring, is 58. As a young musician in Chicago, he befriended and learned from some of the greatest bluesmen of an earlier generation. But he's been a blues player and fan since he was a kid in Florida. When I was about nine years old, um, I found an eight-track tape of, of Muddy Waters. And I heard Otis Spann on the piano. And I just said to myself, who is that? That's what I want to do, is play the piano. From that time on, I started collecting records, and I bought at least one record of every artist, you know. In the last 50 years, Chuck's blues collection has grown to many thousands of records. But it's not only vinyl and tapes. His basement is a museum of every kind of blues artifact you can imagine. And from the beginning, the music that drew him the most was coming out of Chicago, especially from Chess Records. When I heard the Chess stuff, it just knocked me out. Chuck has always figured out a way to meet his idols. It started in Florida with chess artist Bo Diddley. Knocked on the door, said, hey, is Bo Diddley here? Just a minute. And he showed up, he had the hat on, and <laughs> he heard me play. He says, Chuck, you got that chess sound. Sound like a long distance call. Muddy Waters would come through town, and we wait for the white band with the Illinois place to, to show up, and it would be Muddy. No, you hear my phone. And then one time he goes, do you want to go out to eat? I said, ha, oh God, I'm going to go out to eat with Muddy. Most of the people he'd want to meet were in Chicago. So at 18, Chuck and a friend drove through the night and went straight to a Chicago blues bar where he met another of his idols. One who would become a friend and mentor. It was the great Chicago blues man, Sonny Land Slim, who was sitting right by the door. My eyes were like, oh my God, there, there he is. I said, I just drove 24 hours to meet you, man. <laughs> How you doing, son, you know? That was the beginning of an 18-year friendship. Sonny Land welcomed this young, half-white, half-Cherokee, piano-playing blues fanatic into his life. And he introduced him to another great Chicago blues man, Little Brother Montgomery. Chuck was 22. Little Brother and Sunnyland were in their 70s, and the three of them got together regularly at Little Brother's apartment on South Cornell. And then Jay McShann would come over, Willie Dixon would come over. At some time, there was five piano players over there. Chuck says that Sunnyland and Little Brother were close friends and competitors. Brothers say, well, Sunnyland good at the two or three songs he can play. <laughs> and then Sunnyland would say about Little Brother, well, you know, Brother, he can't sing. When I was a little boy, my mother... There were lots of young blues fans in the 60s and 70s, but few who made their way into the lives of the old masters and became masters themselves, quite like Barrel House Chuck. Mm -hmm. 